Hi, I'm Paige. And I'm Amla. Today, we are going to chat about dreams. Paige, have you ever had a dream that was special to you? Yes, so one time when I was younger, I had a dream that I was a princess that lived in a massive palace and it was so fun. That's awesome. Let's watch today's God story. And heads up, we're in for a weird dream. <laughs> I'm so close, airplane, come on. Hi everyone, it's Jen, welcome back. So far in this series, we've been learning about a guy in the Old Testament whose name was Daniel. In today's story, Daniel is going to explain another dream to King Nebuchadnezzar, and King Neb is going to learn something really important. The thing that the king is going to find out in today's story is so important, it's actually today's big idea. God is the king of kings. Daniel chapter four begins a little bit differently than all of the other ones. It starts with King Nebuchadnezzar saying he is writing a letter to people all over the world to talk about what has happened. He praises the Most High God and he shares this next story. The king was at home in his palace. He was really successful and content. Then he had a dream. This king seems to have a lot of dreams. And he was troubled by it and wanted to know what it meant, so he sent for Daniel. He wanted Daniel to come because he knew that God was with Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar told Daniel the visions and dreams that he had. Here's what the king told Daniel. I looked up and saw a tree standing in the middle of the land. It was very tall and had grown to be large and strong. It could be seen anywhere on earth. It had beautiful leaves and lots of fruit. It provided food for the people and the animals. While Wild animals lived under it and birds lived in its branches. Then he saw a holy one, a messenger coming down from the heavens. He called down in a loud voice, cut down the tree, break off the branches, strip its leaves, scatter its fruit, let the animals run away and let the birds fly away. But leave the stump with its roots in the ground, leave it in the field, put a band of iron and bronze around it. The messenger in the vision said, let King Neb live with the animals among the plants of the earth. Let him no longer have the mind of a man, but an animal. Let him stay that way until seven periods of time pass by. Then the decision is announced by the holy messengers. So all who are alive will know that the most high God is king. He rules over all kingdoms on earth. He gives them to anyone he wants. Sometimes he puts the least important people in charge of them. This is the dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar had. Now tell me what it means. Daniel was puzzled for a few moments, hmm. and then he was afraid. But the king said, don't let the dream or its meaning make you afraid. Then Daniel answered, King, I wish this dream was about your enemies, but it wasn't. The tree was King Nebuchadnezzar, big and strong. The Holy One, the messenger, called for the tree to be cut down, but to leave the stump. God meant that King Nebuchadnezzar would be cut down, and he would be driven away from living with people to live with wild animals. The king will eat grass like an ox and be wet with the dews. Seven periods of time will pass by. Let's read what Daniel said next. Then you will recognize that the Most High God rules over all kingdoms on earth. He gives them to anyone he wants, but he gave a command to leave the stump of the tree along with its roots. That means your kingdom will be given back to you. It will happen when you recognize that the God of heaven rules. So your majesty, I hope you will accept my advice. Stop being sinful, do what is right, give up your evil practices, show kindness to those who are being treated badly. Then perhaps things will continue to go well with you. Then all of this happened to the king, just as Daniel had said. He was driven away from people, he ate grass like an ox, and at the end of the time, King Nebuchadnezzar looked up to heaven. His mind was clear and he praised the Most High God. And then everything was restored to King Nebuchadnezzar. He finished his letter by saying, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, give praise and honor and glory to the king of heaven. Everything he does is right. All his ways are fair. He is able to bring down those who live proudly. 
King Nebuchadnezzar had discovered that God really is the King of Kings. Even though King Nebuchadnezzar had seen God work before through the incredible story of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, or through the dreams that Daniel interpreted for him, and having his dreams explained through Daniel, he still didn't really know that God was the King of Kings. Going through this experience, King Neb saw that everything God said would happen did happen. And it allowed King Neb to be completely clear, God is the King of Kings. As Christ followers, we can be secure in knowing that God is the King of Kings. God is the Most High God, and we are children of the Most High God. So today and every day, it is good to remember that our God is the King of Kings. Well, everyone, it was so good to be with you. I'll see you next time. King Nebuchadnezzar ate grass like an ox before he fully came to the understanding that God is the King of Kings. Paige asked a few friends about God being king in their lives. Let's watch this. Hi friends, it's so great to see you. Today we are talking about how God is the King of Kings. And to talk a little bit about that with me, I brought my friends Catherine and Natalie. Hi. So when we think of a king or queen, we think of people who rule a country, help their people to have peace and prosper. But I wanna know from you guys, what, how do you see a king and queen? I see a king or queen as someone who helps lead the people of the country in the best direction so there's no conflict between anybody and everybody's happy. Yeah, that's awesome. And now I want to know, how can you make God the king of your life? I think you can make God the king of your life by following in the path he set out for us to do, by following what he does in the Bible so that we can live a life more like him. Yeah, that's awesome. And then how do we take that and give God the proper space and place in our lives to be that king that he is? I think we can do that by showing kindness to people. Like if someone's alone, we can go up to them and make sure um, they're okay and maybe hang out with them so they're not lonely. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what about you, Natalie? Um, I like to make connections. I go to a youth group and we like to talk to God, but we also like to make connections and talk and just um, give advice to one another. Super cool. Yeah, that's great. We can also show loving kindness by um, making coffee or breakfast for our parents and family. Like, I like to make waffles because they're my favorite. I love waffles, too. <laughs> well, those are great. And, you know, those work great because God ultimately knows the right plan for us. He knows what direction that we should go in. So when we give him that space, you know, our lives will be better. Um, well, thank you guys for sharing with us. And thank you, friends, for listening. And we will see you very soon. Bye. I love how Catherine and Natalie want to honor God by living the way they feel he is guiding them to live. And I love that they made waffles for their parents. Absolutely. Well, let's break into our small groups now to see what this will look like in our own story. Bye. Bye.